Now, uh, those of us who are uh, studying the impacts of climate policies on a Russian economy would really love to learn more about what our European partners think about the potential impacts on Russia from specific uh, climate policy scenarios. So here I would like to hand it over from Greece to the United Kingdom. So, Alex, I'm about to hand it over to you so that Alexander Kaberle can actually uh, tell us about the models used by European colleagues and what they're showing. Thank you. So let me share my screen. Good morning, everyone. From, uh, from this project, and uh, thank you, Harris, for introducing it. Um, quickly, what we are trying to achieve globally in terms of climate change um, can be summarized by looking at what is projected to happen in, in the future, depending on what, um, how, how little or how much we um, we succeed in in uh, mitigating uh, climate change and re by reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, as we can see here, let me just put a, a quick laser pointer here. Um, so, from these for these different temperature outcomes, we get very different types of impacts. Um, heat waves uh, go up considerably, not just in intensity but also in frequency. Agricultural drought becomes a, a, a quite a challenge for sustained uh, agricultural production. Floods increase as well. Um, and then maize here is used as, a, as an example of what may happen to agricultural productivity. So the, the higher the, the temperature outcome, the more climate change we will be facing in terms of uh, not just temperature, but also precipitation and um, uh, water availability and so on. So, and, and for a country like, like Russia, yeah, some may say that heat waves are not necessarily an issue, but uh, I would say that they probably would be because the infrastructure in, in Russia is not, probably not prepared for higher temperatures or sustained higher temperatures in the summer. And um, you know, we, we're seeing wildfires happening in Siberia. Permafrost melting will put significant amounts of infrastructure risk. There's a, there's a good literature on the potential financial uh, impact of that, um, particularly because a lot of the oil and gas production is in the Arctic and depends on this infrastructure, which depends on a solid frozen ground. So the, this is just to make the case that mitigating the uh, climate change and reduce by reduce, reducing emissions and avoiding these very large increases in temperature is in everybody's interest, no matter where you are in the globe. Um, so this is why we need to reduce emissions rapidly. So this is a, a, just an example of different projections into the future and uh, how, you know, how bad it can get. This is the kind of a worst case, no policy scenario where we get almost you know, as much as five degrees increase. An average no policy scenario is around four degrees. But where we are with the direction that we, we are going is, is probably below that, but above the, the, the Paris Agreement uh, objectives, which are well below two degrees, one and a half degrees. Um, even a two and a half degree uh, scenario would imply significant climate change um, uh, impacts. So there is a, this is the urgency of, of, of action. More needs to be done. These are the pledged policies. This is basically NDCs, national determined contributions. If we follow that line, we're going to end up around three degrees and we need to bend that curve downward. So this project is to inform um, policymakers by engaging with stakeholders and producing these, uh, this, these scenarios to go forward. And this, this is what this workshop is about. We want to de develop uh, Russia-specific uh, scenarios and projections, and we want this to be informed by, uh, by, by national stakeholders. Um, so this is just another example of where we, how much we need to actually change our trajectory. This is where the current policies are taking us. This is by 2030. Um, these are the NDCs, the National Determined Contributions, and here are the ranges of different um, Paris uh, outcomes, Paris-compliant outcomes that 
So this this challenge here in the next 10 years is is quite significant. And actually, this next decade is critical. And this is a major finding from the special report on 1.5 degrees from the IPCC. So our, we cover major emitters, uh, most large economies uh, in the world. Um, and we can see that Russia has quite a significant uh, model coverage in this project. Um, several of the global models uh, include Russia as a, as, a, as a separate region, um, but there's also national models covering Russia and then the US, Brazil, China, India, South Africa, European Union, and so on. Um, so so this, what, what this project aims to do now is to gather information from Russian stakeholders to inform how to design our, our scenarios and how to design, uh, how to constrain our models or, or to introduce elements into our models that may not be there that would reflect the reality on the ground. Um, quickly going through mitigation targets in, in Russia's NDC, um, is basically at this point to reduce by 25 to 30% by 2030 uh, compared to 1990. So reduce emissions by about a quarter to a third compared to 1990 levels. This includes land use and land use change in forests, uh, which is a major concern in, in, in Russia from what I, I understand. Um, and this target is subject to the maximum possible account of absorbing capacity of forests. So it's assuming that forests will absorb as much as theoretically possible to absorb uh, carbon from the atmosphere and turn it into biomass. This is what uh, is, is, um, is, is assumed that will deliver this target. The current situation is that uh, Russia is the fifth largest emitter behind China, US, EU, and India. And fuel combustion is responsible for more than half of these total emissions, excluding land use change. Uh, and this mainly from, from power, heat, uh, transport, and industries. But fugitive emissions of methane also contribute a significant amount of emissions, uh, about a third of, of total emissions. And, and they are obviously localizing coal, oil, and gas industries. So the, the, I'll be curious to, 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 to hear from stakeholders how much uh, can these be reduced? How much can these fugitive emissions be controlled? Um, but uh, that would be one thing that we can, we can uh, address. Forestry also provides a net sink. So it's an important part of, uh, of the emissions of the CO2 balance in, in, um, of the carbon balance in, in, in Russia. And they have significant potential for further growth, uh, making this an important sector for national decarbonization stra uh, strategy. Uh, agriculture, waste, and industrial processes are relatively minor, but together they add up to uh, 17% of total greenhouse gases. So this is the situation in Russia today. Um, and we would like to explore how th this, these can be leveraged or this, um, um, the ambition here raised in terms of reducing these emissions. So uh, the first uh, effort that we, we have a paper in the review, an article in the review right now, which explores where we are headed. So it's, it's taking current policies and NDCs and projecting them forward to try to understand to what extent um, the current efforts will deliver future reductions and how close they may get us to uh, Paris compliant goals. These are global results and we can see that the range is quite large depending on, so, so what is shown here is several models applying four different uh, metrics for for future efforts. So what we're doing here is we're taking current effort, which goes to 2030, and projecting it forward uh, using different metrics like carbon intensity, uh, emissions intensity, uh, or uh, an implied carbon price that, that then creates these different uh, trajectories here. And if we look at Russia, these are fossil energy CO2 emissions in Russia. We have quite a spread depending on model. So the models uh, differ quite significantly in, in how they portray uh, Russian emissions into the future. So this is where we are today, this is 2020. And, um, and then also depending on the metric that is used, we also see a, a separation there. So, so these model differences may be uh, re a result of, of the model structure itself, but also of assumptions. It may be the result of things that are 
some 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 elements that are not being represented that that would, could uh, be present in 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 the reality in Russia that perhaps by by in, including some 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 options would would reduce the spread but uh, model models tend to give different results depending on how they're structured some of these are economic models some of these are energy systems models so so they will give you a different um, a different flavor and this can give us an an idea of, of the range of, of of options so how can you the stakeholders help us make our modeling uh, real world relevant so for example, if we look at these sectors, we look at oil and gas, forests, and, land, and fuel use, these are not present in the NDC. There are no targets for, for, the NDC, uh, for these um, sectors in the, in the Russian NDC, but it would be interesting to understand what, to what extent it is possible to reduce emissions in these, um, in these uh, sectors. So the current sources of emissions in these sectors in oil and gas, there's a lot of CH4 fugitive emissions, a lot of methane, natural gas leakage, basically. And this, perhaps, this natural gas may have value in 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 in, in being captured and used rather than vented or flared or just leaked to the atmosphere. Uh, in forest deforestation and land use change may be also a, a um, is also a, a current source, but land degradation as well. Perhaps uh, there, there are uh, options here to explore. And then in fuel use, power, heat production, transport, and industries, what are some uh, measures that could reduce the emissions from these sectors, um, perhaps through energy efficiency measures, perhaps through, through actual uh, emissions reduction, targeted emission reduction efforts. And these are some of these potential measures that I've been talking about. So reduce leaks, flaring, and venting, afforestation, reforestation, natural land conservation, faster improvement, rate inefficiency from, from, from energy use, or simply fuel switching, switching to renewables rather than fossil fuels. So this is, these are some of the, uh, um, the issues that we would like to explore here today. So with that, I will, I will close. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to this discussion and um, I'll pass it back on to, to the host. Thank you very much. Alex. Yeah, thank you very much, Alex. I am uh, really looking forward to some discussions at the end of the session. And uh, right now, I think I should give the floor to the Russian speakers on the same subject. Uh, 